What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, let's talk about the summer of Splinterlands that is upcoming, summer 2024, because I'm recording this on May 1st of 2024. And so I'm just looking ahead as to what I think we can and maybe should expect from the team in terms of releases over the next couple of months. Now, understand, I this is just my pure speculation. I have no insider info. In fact, the team seems to be very tight-lipped about any kind of details in terms of like what specifically they're working on, as well as of course timelines. They've they've uh, very much pulled back on giving any kind of timeframes on things outside of you know just general timelines. That being said, they have mentioned a couple of things, and so. I'm just going to do a broad overview, kind of assuming that we have roughly two release windows per month, right? If they're doing them every two weeks, we should have two release windows in May, two release windows in June, July, August, right? Now, here's the thing. What I want to do is cover where I see things are at now, and then obviously it gets a little bit fuzzier the further we get out. But let's start with May. One of the things that was talked about in the recent town hall was the fact that Land 1.6 or elements from Land 1.6 are being worked on, they're even being tested, right? So the Grain LP, for example, uh, is being tested on the MAV server. And they wanna get both of these things, sorry, but they wanna get both the, the Grain LP as well as the prefix titles out in the month of May. In fact, they've even committed to that. That's the first time in a while that they've committed to some kind of time frame, which to me signals, you know, just because they've become very reluctant to give time frames, they must feel relatively confident about that. Which means that I think, again, if the grain LPs are available on uh, map server already, we just had a release window, right, this uh, er earlier this uh, this week, or just yesterday, I guess. Um, and uh, that means that, you know, we're, we're probably due in for um, another one in a couple weeks. At that point, I do believe we might be able to expect the grain LP, but basically what I'm chalking the entire month of May up to is land, right? Whether it's the Grain LP or whether it's the prefix titles, I believe those two items are go going to dominate each of the, uh, the the two release windows that we have. My guess is we see the Grain LP first, since that already looks like it's in testing, and then the prefix titles would be coming potentially after that. In terms of you know anything from the ranked side, I don't know that we'll see anything. Maybe there'll be some tweaks and updates to the uh, you know the reward shop or to Glint or whatever the team is seeing when they get more feedback. Right, this will be like the third or fourth season that they have in terms of like the overall reward structure. Oh, sorry, the rank structure change, and then of course the reward structure change that followed that. Um, so, land is going to be the big thing for me, is my guess. Right, and there's already two major uh, there's already two major items that they have said that they want to release. There's two release windows. I don't think they do them at the same time. I mean, it'd be crazy if they did, but uh, you know, just just knowing the team and wanting to be very focused on getting something with no bugs and hiccups and all that, which they've been very good about, right? So I can I can imagine them breaking those two items out into two separate release windows, which makes up the month of May. So now we move into June. And my expectations for June now fall back into the ranked side of things. Uh, and actually, more specifically, the new player experience, which is something that the team is obviously very heavily focused on. Now, after the reward changes were put in, I believe that was at the beginning of April, Matt said that there were really only two other items that the team was working on from the new player experience. The first of which is something that's been talked about for uh, probably over a year at this point, which is the one-click set rentals. So the ability for someone to come in, you know, or, and, and just you know, click one button, they rent everything. And I know there's features like that already on third parties, but having that in-game would make things tremendously easier, and it would also probably allow, uh, you know people who own cards to be able to offer them uh, in a way where, you know, you, you get the entire set, you're guaranteed it, the, the prices don't change, right? And you're getting it all from the, the same individual. So for people that want to engage in that, uh, there, there'll probably be opportunities for for renters, um, rather, or I should say card lords rather than the renters. So that's the first part. The other part 
is the tutorial aspect, which they, they've teased, you know, very slightly, uh, both on town halls as well as in Discord, right? They have this whole kind of like onboarding experience. Again, it's not going to impact many of us unless there's, you know, things that we, we don't know. And, you know, you can always learn something new. But I think for most of us that have been around the game for a while, this clearly isn't for us, right? This is going to be more of a hand holding that takes people through what is Splinterlands? You know, what are the different elements? What are the different attack types? What are all the things, you know, and, and, and really gives them the, the full kind of guidance as they go through. And uh, again, this is for somebody that's never laid eyes on the game before. So that's two items. And I believe, and again, maybe I'm being a little optimistic here, but my, my hope is that we see those two items as the two items that come out in June. So again, it's the new player experience uh, versus one click set rentals. The other one is kind of this onboarding tutorial. And that actually gets us to, you know, the end of the first half of the year, right? Because July onwards is Q3 in the second half of the year. So that covers May, that covers June. In July, this is where things get fuzzy. And I really don't know what else to expect. I have two items that I think could be relevant, but... Again, you know, timing and all that, uh, it, it makes sense, but you just never know if things get delayed and whatnot. So the first of which is Soulbound Reward Card Unlocks, as well as the new Soulbound Reward Card Set, right? So the Rebellion Reward Card Set. Again, that's like two months from now. I don't know where the team is at in terms of designing stats, in terms of designing cards and all that. I don't know where they're at in terms of the mechanisms for unlock, so uh, again, but they, they did say they wanted to get this done by the summertime. So I'm not going with early summer. I'm literally going midsummer, saying that July, right, or the second half of summer, July is probably when it, we would expect that at the very earliest, just based on what we know the team has been working on and has committed to releasing in the upcoming months, right? Land this month, and then they've been working on the new player experience. So my expectation is that probably sometime in July at the very earliest, we'll see the new Soulbound reward card set and we'll have the ability to unlock Soulbound cards. That will be in July. Now, maybe that's two separate things, right? Maybe they allow people to unlock cards first and then switch them over and, and then uh, on the second window, switch things over. Maybe they put it all into one weekend or, or into one release window. I have no idea. Like I said, this is where things get fuzzy. Uh, and I'm kind of just including August in this as well, right? Because we just don't really know. Um, the other thing, that I could see coming through is another promo card sale. Now the team has wanted to do a quarterly promo card sale, meaning that they have four right over the course of um, four over the course of the year. And actually, if you think about it, if the life of a core set is 18 months, you could essentially fit five into those, right? So, uh, you, you, or you could, what I'm saying is that you could fit five quarters into that 18 months which goes along with what they've wanted to do in saying that, you know, they're, they want to run, run it every quarter. And then of course have something where if they're doing it, uh, obviously these are like dual element units, but if they, if they allow themselves to make sure that they give equal, <laughs> equal time to all the different units, then, um, you know, five, five probably would be, uh, the ideal amount that you would need, which means we had one for the Bitcoin promo having in April, so my expectation is that we would have one at some point in Q3, right? And Q3 is July, August, and September. So that kind of rounds out my expectations in terms of releases over the next, we'll call it three, maybe three and a half to four months at this point in time. There could be other things. There could not be, right? But uh, at this point, that's what I'm seeing based on, you know, everything that we've heard so far. So... Maybe that makes you bullish. Maybe that makes you super excited because you're looking forward to these things. Maybe you're looking at that, you know, uh, kind of like myself. And I'm just like, I'm always like, when's, when's the next catalyst coming, right? Like, what's the, what's the thing that's going to force people to either burn a ton of DEC or buy a ton of SPS? Um, and I've said this before, right? I, I don't know that any of these necessarily will cover that. Maybe the Soulbound Roar card unlock. But, um, you know, at this at this point in time, I, th I don't know. We'll, we'll talk more about the soul bar soul bound reward card unlock, uh, in the future, just because I think there's a lot of cards out there. I don't know. I mean, we know that there's a lot of cards out there. I think a lot of gotten burned for glint, uh, not as much as I thought would have been, but at the same time, 
I don't know what the demand for the cards is going to be outside of like the super, super meta ones, which happen to be like the legendary cards. But that is all I have for you guys in this video. Just wanted to lay it out there. I'm curious to get your feedback if there, if you think there's something that I missed, something that should be added onto this, or maybe if you think my projections are a little too optimistic and that, you know, expecting all of this stuff over the next three months is, uh, is, is a fool's errand. But that's, that's where my head is at. I'm curious to know your thoughts. Let me know them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.